Welcome to Victorious Living with Pastor Charles Cowan. Now let's join Pastor Cowan and the congregation of Faith is the Victory Church. This is Victorious Living. So we are in the sense of God's help, we are helpless. So what do we do? We reach for all the help in the natural world that we can get. But God's help is better than the natural help. God's help is more effective than the natural help. God's help is greater than any help. Now we do, we do have some things in the natural world that will help us in some ways. But none of that compares to the help that God has for us. Loads us down daily with benefits. We cannot win this fight without the Holy Spirit's help. This fight in, in the spirit in the flesh. We can't, we can't win it without the Holy Spirit's help. No flesh will be justified in God's sight, nor shall any flesh glory in his presence. That's the Bible. That's 1 Corinthians one twenty nine. That no flesh should glory in his presence. So that means then that if it's any glory about us, it's the glory of God. Amen. So the outward man has no glory of itself and must be clothed in order to show the glory that is in the inner man. Let me read that for you again. The outward man has no glory of itself. And the outward man must be clothed in order, clothed with, with the things of God or with the nature of God in order to show the glory that is in us in the inner man. Now, what am I talking about tonight? I'm talking about walking in covenant privileges and rights. Which are, which, are, which, are, which are so many, if you just take the time, and maybe you have, take the time to go back, find out what was in the old covenant, find out then how God made a better covenant established upon better promises because it's ratified with his blood. It's unchangeable. God will not, what, is it, what did I say? God will not change his covenant. He, wouldn't, he will not alter the thing. It's gone out of our mouth. So, if we do not clothe our outward man with the attributes of the inner man, the at attributes of the outward man prevails as the dominant force of our life. But remember this, who's our helper? It's the Holy Spirit. When this happens, the word refers to them as being sensual and occupied with gratifying the desires of the outward man which makes one sensual and not spiritual. Romans chapter 8, verses 12 through 13. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, or we could say if you're led by the flesh, you shall die or you shall wither is another word for that. But if you through the Holy Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. Okay, now let's read 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 7 through 8. Be sober, be vigilant. Why? Because your adversary, who is it? Is the devil. He's acting like what? Didn't say a roaring lion, said as a roaring lion. What's he doing? He's walking about. What's he doing? What's he looking for? Seeking whom he may devour. Amen. He's wanting to keep the blessing of God away from you, from us. So the design of Satan in his schemes and tricks against the Christian is to bring them to apostasy. Now, listen to me just for a moment. Apostasy does not mean that one denies there's God. That is an atheist. An atheist uh, denies the existence of God. I don't believe in God. I don't believe there is a God. That's, that is apostasy. That he's talking, but apostasy that he's talking about here where the Christian 
is concerned that we have not denied there is a God, but we have just said we're not going to walk with God. And so apostasy, again, then stretches itself out more than just a person who says that they do not believe, uh, they do not believe in, in God. So let me get up, go on. The design of Satan and his schemes and tricks against the Christian is to bring them to apostasy. What is apostasy? And does it only pertain to the total renunciation of God and the Lord Jesus and taking an atheist position into one's belief system? And the answer is not necessarily so. You can't apostatize from what you say you believe. We believe in God, we believe there is a God, we believe that Jesus is our Lord, we believe that he is our Savior, we believe all those things, but we can apostatize from what he tells us to do. What does apostasy mean, do you know? Y'all still here tonight? What, is it? What, what does apostasy mean? It's to fall away from what? From obeying the covenant from uh, to fall away from not being a doer of the word. It's to fall away from that. So sometimes, folks, I'm not saying you're doing that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying all of us are, what's that word? Susceptible, whatever, to that. All of us can, can do that, to fall away because we're not adhering to what we say we believe. But yet we believe in God. We believe there is a God. We believe in Jesus. We believe Jesus is our Savior. I received the, you know, the Savior, some of you here tonight, back in 1892. I mean 1992. We can say, we can say we believe there is a God. He is a God that loves me. Jesus is Lord, Jesus is my Lord, Jesus is my Redeemer, but apostatize from being obedient to do what he tells us to do. That is the apostasy that happens to a Christian. Okay. I'm going to come down here to my amen corner to get a little encouragement here. <laughs> amen. Amen. Because these are, these are things sometimes people don't, don't want to hear. I'm not saying you don't want to hear, but I'm just saying people sometimes don't want to hear this because I'm saved and going to heaven, glory to God. Well, praise God, that's something to really be grateful and thankful for, no question about that. But yet at the same time, we want to, we want to bring ourselves back into how we should respond as a Christian to the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, let me go a little bit further. You got time for that? Okay. So an atheist is one who denies the existence of God. And then he, I, I talked about sensual is to give up or put aside one's faith and faithful lifestyle. It doesn't mean to disbelieve that there is a God or that there that Jesus is, is your Lord. You it's just not a faithful lifestyle. All right. And so let us remember that living and dying is not confined to the death of the body alone. There, there are certain things that can happen to people going through life that is the result of spiritual death and what it brought into the world when Adam fell in the Garden of Eden. So we can, we can die to certain things in our life as we travel through life. We can, we can die to the things that God has prescribed for, for our life and not receive those things that God has made available to us. Amen. So let's go down, let's go back over to the New Testament. Or, yeah, we're already there. Let's go to Romans chapter 8, verse 25, 26, and I'll hustle along here. But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it? Now notice, notice how that's the terminology. It was, but if we hope for we don't, what we don't see, uh, then do we wait, wait with 
patience for it. Verse 26, then here's what the Holy Spirit does. Likewise, the Spirit also helps us or helpeth us our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself, the King James says itself, for the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Infirmities uh, refers to the weaknesses of our flesh as well as to the carnal side of life, which is this physical body. As a believer, we're not left on our own or we're not left to our own resources to deal with the flesh or spiritual, our spiritual adversary, the devil. The Holy Spirit has been sent to help us and he will take hold together with us where our flesh is concerned and where the devil is concerned. In other words, you'll never face a temptation that God won't be there with you to, to bring you away from it, out of it, and victory over it. You know, the Bible teaches us, you know, that, that Jesus, he, he, he went through every temptation which is common to man. We do not have a temptation in our life that Jesus did not have. Everybody shake yourself, you're getting sleepy. We do, not we do not have a temptation in our life that Jesus did not endure. And he suffered in, the, in his human body. He suffered in his human body just like we would where temptations are concerned. But there's one major difference. He was what? Without sin. And so that's what made him a perfect human being. He was the son of God, but he was also the son of man. It made him a perfect, complete son of man. Son of man. When he uh, resisted and when he was tempted, but yet he was not overcome with the temp temptation. So let us not forget, please, I'm talking to myself now. You, you can determine whether I'm talking, you know, but I'm talking to myself. Let, let's not forget we have a helper that engages with us, but not without us. He doesn't do anything by himself. He does it with us. Let me say it again. Let's not forget that we have a helper that engages with us, but not without us. So that means I have to yield my life uh, and, the, and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. He, he's a helper for me, but he doesn't engage in his help for me without me. He just doesn't do it on, on his own. So we know this, that the, temp, that the serpent was a tempter. We know that Jesus was led of the Spirit into the wilderness and was tempted by the devil. God's hand is a reference. God, the hand of God is a reference to the Spirit and power of God. Jesus, listen to this, Jesus pierced the temple, tempter with the word and with the help of the Holy Spirit. Now, now listen to, get the impact of that statement. That, that uh, 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 Jesus pierced the tempter with the word. What, what's the Bible called the word? It is what? The sword of the spirit. Jesus pierced Satan with the sword, which is the, which is the word of God. And the power of the Holy Spirit is what quickens the word and makes it powerful. The Holy Spirit is the power contained in, in the word of God. And so we see then that, that Jesus in his flesh body spoke the word and the spirit or the hand of God pierced the fleeing tempter. And so we know this when, when on the third, what was it, the third temptation, Satan left him for a, for a more, for, a, for another season at some time. Satan left him. What caused him to leave? Jesus pierced him with the sword of the Spirit. 
the word of God. And so every day we speak to the evil forces, the word of God. We speak to the principalities and the powers, the rulers of the darkness. It doesn't matter if it looks like they're doing anything or not. Speak the word of God. The, the word of God, the sword of the spirit pierces Satan, pierces his ability to be able to bring upon us what God has delivered us from and out of. And so then we see in Luke's gospel, the fourth chapter, the 13th verse, and when the devil had ended all the temptation. Now, you, we know this. There are seasons in our life that we sense and know that, that, that temptation is, is, is more appetizing or whatever than they are at other times. We know that. So when the devil had ended all the temptations, he departed from him for a season. Again, I want to just point it out to you. What did Jesus use to cause the tempter to flee from him? He used the sword of the spirit. He used the, 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 the word of God and say, it pierced Satan. Well, if you pierce Satan, then what are you doing? You're disabling. You're disabling his ability to do against you what, what, what uh, the devil wants to do or bring to you. I'm about, I'm about finished, so. And, and when the devil had ended all the temptations, he departed from him for a season. The devil is not going to quit tempting you while, you're, while we're here in this present world. He's not going. Now, he'll leave you for a season, but he'll, he'll come in the back door. He'll come in the window. He'll come down the chimney. He'll come in some way trying to cover himself while all the while bringing to you things that rob you of the benefits that God loads us with on a daily basis. And so the same spirit is present today. It was the spirit of God that God used to create the heavens and the earth and that same spirit is present today to help us but not without our participation. God works with it. For we are laborers together. God's not just going to do it at random, no matter what I do. We are laborers together. The Bible teaches that we're laborers together with Christ. We work together, not apart. We work with the Holy Spirit, not apart. We don't depend on the Holy Spirit to do everything. There is a participa participation, participation that, that God asks of us. So the Spirit is present today to help us, but not without our participation. And so let me close it tonight. I don't want no amen on that. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 18 and 19. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. This, this is an admonition. It's an instruction that comes through the writings of the Apostle Paul, came to him by the Holy Spirit. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled. If something is filled, it's what? full, but be filled with the Spirit. How do you get filled with the Spirit? You've already received Christ. He's in your heart. The Spirit of God is there. We're born of the Spirit of God. You've already received the Holy Spirit, but yet the Holy Spirit in the baptism with the Holy Spirit can dwell in a person at lower degree all the way up to being filled with with it. And so that's what happened here where Jesus is concerned. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled. Go all the way to the top, but be filled with the Spirit. Now look what he says in verse 19. Speaking to yourself. You know who the person is you need to talk to the most? Who is it? It's not your neighbor. It's not, your, it's, it, it's not your counselor down on 4th Street. It says, speaking to yourselves. What are you to say to yourself? Speaking to yourselves what? 
and psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. So what do we say in the traffic? What do we say? I mean, listen, I, I told Sue this earlier, later, sometime this afternoon. I said, Sue, we got some of the craziest drivers out here on Old Hickory Boulevard. Listen, if they come up behind you and they can't get over because there's a car, car over there, here they come through the turn lane. And man, they are lickety splitting up that turn lane. I mean, throwing gravel and all that stuff. And guess what? I got to the, I got to the traffic light right behind them. They, may, they put some distance between me and them initially. But I pulled up right behind them. I wanted to blow my horn so bad. I wanted to get out of my car and go up there and I knock on the window. You know what I'm saying? There's some, there's some crazy folks. Well, and Sue says, well, you drive fast too. Isn't that right? You, you drive fast too. And so I, I guess that pretty much hits us all in this room. We oftentimes drive too fast. Oftentimes the tempter is winning when we're driving. Now, I didn't say you. I didn't say you did, did win over you. I didn't say that. I said sometimes the tempter wins in certain situations of our life, not necessarily in the traffic. That's, that's just a little sad thought. But sometimes the tempter wins. When we should praise, we don't feel like it. You know what? Maybe, maybe none of us in this room tonight has ever felt that way. But there's times. I, I know one time I asked a person, here, I said, how come you don't lift your hands when you praise? He said, I don't feel like it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. You know, he, he, it was very authoritative. How come you don't? I don't want to. I said, yes, sir. And so sometimes we don't do things where God has asked us to do because our flesh doesn't want to do it. Amen. Sometimes we say things when we're preaching that we shouldn't say but we feel better because we said it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. You know, I want to give you a little laugh before we go here, you know, because the Holy Spirit is our helper, but he does not participate with us without our participation. So I have to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. How, how can I do that? Well, I read in the Word. That's one way we do it. Praying in the Spirit is one, one way we do it. And praising God is one way we do it. Different ways that we do it. Amen. But we, we are participating. Something's happening for us when we do this. We may not see it. We may not feel it. We may not know it. But we'll walk into it somewhere tonight before we get home. Sometime tomorrow. We'll walk in the goodness that God has given to us. Loading us daily with benefits. Participation with him in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Cause God to start creating things. When I say create, or to arranging things out there. When you, you know you're walking toward a blessing. Sometimes you may think, well, I don't know. But you walk right into that blessing and all, all of a sudden, here it comes. Here it comes. Amen. So the Holy Spirit, I'm wearing this out, ain't I? The Holy Spirit does not work for us without our participation with him. So pray in the spirit a lot. Amen. And probably some of you spend a lot of time. I know I do spend 25 or 30 minutes from home over here. That's a good time to pray. A, a good time to pray. Not the only time to pray, but it's a good time to pray. Amen. So let's make ourselves available to all these good things that brings to us the wonderful benefits that he loads us daily with. Amen. Anybody ever been blessed by the Lord? Well, that's all of us. That's all of us in this room tonight. Have you ever got an unexpected blessing from the Lord? That's all of us. Amen. He loads us daily with benefits. Hallelujah. Sometimes benefits we may not even notice, but God is working something good for us. Praise God. Thank you so much for viewing the program with us today. I do uh, trust that you were blessed by the word. You know, uh, Jesus made the statement, man shall not live by bread alone, 
but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So you know, there's a lot of subjects to talk about in the scriptures, but when it's the word of God, there's life and health and healing and wholeness and wellness and prosperity involved in the word. So I do hope that you were blessed as you viewed the program today. I'd like to pray with you, and then I'll be back with you to talk about our offer for today. Father, I pray for the people. I pray, Lord, your graces and mercies upon their life, upon their homes, upon if they are ministry. I just pray, Lord, your very best, health, healing, wholeness, and wellness, that they will experience that in its fullest measure. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Have you ever stopped to think about the time in which we live? You know, there's a lot of things going on out there in the world, a lot of political things, even over into the uh, religious uh, part of our society. And so I've written a book that it, we have entitled How to Deal with the Cares of Life. You know, I talk to a lot of people that are burdened, a lot of people who have a lot of worry, a lot of people are just burdened down with the cares of life. In this book, we teach you uh, how to win or overcome these cares of life that come to all of us. They'll come at us, they'll come to us, and we need to know how to resist those cares, those worried thoughts uh, that come to our mind, how do I deal with that? So in this book, How to Deal with the Cares of Life, for an offering of $10, this book will be yours if you'll just call us. The number's on the screen below and the uh, telephone number's there, uh, the uh, email number's there, and if you'll just let us know that you'd like to have a copy of this book, How to Deal with the Cares of Life, we'll be delighted to send that book to you and just pray that you will be blessed as you read it. So God bless you. Thanks again for viewing the program and we'll be back with you next time right here on Victorious Living. You've been watching Victorious Living with Pastor Charles Cowan. It's our hope that today's message has ministered to the need you have in your life. If you would like to receive today's message in its entirety, please call 1-800-842-7896. Or if you're in the Nashville area, call 615-226-2145 and ask for the product number on the screen. Visit us online at victoriousliving.org. If you're ever in the Nashville area, come and worship with us. Sundays at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. From Pastor Cowan and the Congregation of Faith is the Victory Church, we'll be looking for you next time right here on Victorious Living.